This video is made possible by Max at Naperville Cadillac. Naperville Cadillac offers no BS pricing, meaning what you see is what you pay. No hidden fees, the way car buying should be. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2004 Ford Excursion Limited. Up front is a 6.0 liter turbo diesel V8 and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here excursion for a couple of reasons. First of all, I've never filmed one here on the channel. This truck, this SUV is very iconic in America and yet I haven't filmed one. So today I am changing that. And the second reason is because I just find these incredibly cool. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers and other merchandise when it becomes available. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you get a video of your car just like this one. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that six liter turbo V8 under the hood. Well, this engine was actually offered from 2003 and a half until the end of the excursion's life in 2005. So halfway through 2003, they switched it from the 7.3 liter diesel V8 to the six liter. Now the 7.3 is actually kind of the more desired engine. They are a little bit more reliable. They're a little bit more bulletproof, but in terms of reliability, the six liter isn't terrible. It's just that the 7.3 is better. It's always lived in the shadow of the 7.3 and the 7.3 has obtained almost halo status. Now I've driven another vehicle with this engine before, a school bus, and I actually like this engine. I think it performs decently well and it's a lot less of a headache than the 6.4 liter that later came from Ford. Power sits up at about 325 horsepower, which this was the most powerful engine option for the excursion. And it also puts out 560 foot pounds of torque. Now there were four engines offered in the excursion. This six liter V8, that was diesel, the 7.3 liter diesel V8, a gas V8, and a 6.8 liter gasoline V10, a Triton V10. If anyone has a V10 or 7.3 excursion, I would love to film it. Cause I think a V10 SUV is just the coolest thing in the whole wide world. Like I said, paired to it is that five speed automatic. Now that was actually upgraded later in the excursions life. If you get an earlier model, they do come with four speed automatics and I like it. It's still a diesel though. It's still kind of holding on to gears and whatnot and that sort of thing. But hey, I'm not hating on it. Last but not least, the excursion is four wheel drive. At least this particular one is. And that ups the towing capacity by about 500 pounds over the two wheel drive, meaning this truck can tow 11,000 pounds, which is fantastic. And we'll talk a lot more about that towards the end of the video in my final thoughts segment. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have a bunch of plain Ford gauges. On the left is my fuel and oil pressure. Then I have my speedometer and tachometer in the middle, of course, odometer as well. This truck has over 182,000 miles on it, and I honestly wouldn't even be able to notice. Off to the right, I do have my trans temperature and my coolant temperature for the engine. The steering wheel is big and bubbly. However, on the left, I have cruise control options, which is very nice. But on the right, I not only have next mode and volume, but I also have temperature and fan speed. I truly miss the times and the era where fan speed and temperature were offered on the steering wheel. I often find myself switching that more than my music and it would be helpful. You don't really see climate controls on car steering wheels anymore and that's a little bit sad to me. Off to the left, I have my headlight settings and gauge dimmer switch settings. And on the door, I have my power mirrors, power windows, and power locks. The driver's window being the only automatic down window in the vehicle. All right, the overhead console has a bunch of goodies, so let's run through it. First of all, we do have a couple different things up here. Yeah, 7.3 miles to the gallon average. Not the best, but we do have a pretty big tank, which is pretty nice. Up here, these are our rear climate control options, so you can control the rear climate from here. These two window switches power the rear vent windows at the very back of the vehicle. And then we get two little consoles here. So this is a sunglasses holder, pretty standard stuff there. And then this is for your garage door opener. So the theory is, is that you would actually stick it, 
see if I can focus that. You would actually stick your garage door opener behind here and then hit it through there. Then we just have two dome lights. There you go. Moving into the center, I do get two climate control vents and an aftermarket radio. Now, I normally don't talk too much about aftermarket radios. However, I will say that a previous owner put a backup camera in it, and that is a incredible game changer. It's very hard to see out of this car. So the backup camera helps a lot. Off to the left, I have my four-wheel drive settings. So of course, two-wheel drive, four high and four low. This is a turn dial four-wheel drive setting. I miss the old manual stick, but that's okay. And then I get the climate controls in the middle. Very, very basic here. I don't really get dual zone or anything like that, but it still functions. And off to the right, I have an excursion badge, which is really, really cool. Makes it feel a little bit different because as we'll talk about later, this does ride on an F-250 chassis. I like that they put the badge there, but they also have a power outlet that's hidden behind this cool garage door. They definitely didn't need to put this texture on it and make it look fun, but they did. Not really sure why. Moving down below, we do have off to the left our pedal adjustment. So I have power pedal adjusters. If you are on the shorter side, you can actually bring the pedals closer to you, which is very nice. I have a no skid little cubby. Then I do get pull out cup holders. So we will do a big freaking bottle test here in the Ford Excursion. And I am happy to report that it does in fact pass the big freaking bottle test with flying colors. I've never had or tested a vehicle where the cup holders come out of the dash and had them pass. So this is a very big moment in the shooting car's history of reviews. A pop-out cup holder has passed the big friggin' bottle test. This means celebration. Then I get another cigarette lighter and interestingly a little hook. I'm not quite sure what this is for. I've never seen it in a vehicle before. Maybe for hanging some dirty boots? I, I, I don't know. Very, very interesting. But moving on to the center console, we do have two more cup holders, and they do, in fact, pass the big friggin' bottle test as well. Not as good as the ones that come out of the dash, but still pass nevertheless. Then I get a center console with some coin holders and extra storage options down below. But also on top, interestingly enough, I have a clip so I could actually use the center console as a built-in clipboard. Very, very weird and something we definitely don't see much of anymore. Then we gotta talk about the seats. The seats do have limited printed on them, stitched into them actually, not even printed. They look fantastic, they feel fantastic, they're very, very comfortable. The driver's seat is power, it is heated, and I absolutely love that about it. However, we have two more rows of seating. So let's go do some more backseat reviews. All right, so we're in the second row of the 2004 Ford Excursion Limited and a couple of things to note. First of all, seating space, although the door is kind of a little bit further back, so you kind of have to like get in and then go in front, which is kind of a little weird. Knee room, great. Headroom, great. I have my own vents. I have my own climate controls. I get two cup holders. I get a 12 volt outlet and I get my own volume and headphone controls down below. I really, really love that. I love these captain's chairs. They are very comfortable and I am a big, big fan. But now let's hop into the third row because that was a big selling point for the Ford Excursion. All right, so now we're in the third row of the Excursion and I can honestly say it's also fantastic back here. This has to be one of the comfiest, roomiest, best experiences I've had in a third row SUV. Minivans knock the third row out of the park almost every single time, at least modern minivans. When it comes to the Odyssey, Sienna, the Carnival, they all have really good third row back seats. And I always say that if you have a family, please get a minivan. They're built for it. They're designed for it. This is making me change my tune a little bit. If you have a family, buy a minivan or a Ford Excursion. <laughs> because this back seat is really, really fantastic. I could sit up normal like a human. My knees are not hitting the seat in front of me. My head isn't hitting the ceiling. I'm in my own world, and I really, really, really love that. Now, let's hop around the very back. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space because we have even more space to talk about back there. All right, so we're on the back of the Ford Excursion Limited. So we have a pull handle here, and this will open up the rear glass. A lot chunkier than a lot of other rear glasses on a lot of other SUVs, but that's okay. And then we can come in here, and we have barn doors. So another handle here. It's a little bit of a process getting everything opened up, but one of the nice things about the barn doors 
is that if you have stuff rolling around, you could just open up the glass, reach in and get it, or you could fully open it up like this. I mean, this is just the tailgating machine right here, which is really, really cool. But yes, we talked about that third row being super spacious, but look at how much extra space you get behind the third row. You could even fit a spare tire back here, which is fantastic. You get tie down hooks and things like that. Your jack is over here. You get a 12 volt outlet. Everything I wanna see out of a rear compartment, the Excursion does and has, which is absolutely fantastic. This was the big selling point with the Excursion. Not only did you get three rows of very comfortable seating, but you still get cargo space. You can still put a dog back here. You can still put all your groceries, all your weekend activity tools you could put back here and still have three rows of seating. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic fantastic now we got to talk about the looks and it's very clear that this is an f-250 with a back put onto it it looks identical to the super duty truck of the same era which is totally fine by me i think this is a very early 2000s look and color and overall just so iconic of the era but with all that being said let's get on to my final thoughts what do i think finally driving a Ford excursion. Well, first of all, I really, really like it. I, I don't really find many downsides of this truck besides a little bit of the typical Ford interior issues. You know, a lot of plastic in here, a lot, a lot of plastic, a lot of flimsy materials. However, it's honestly held up great for 182,000 miles. I don't really see anything cracked. Just when you do touch it, it doesn't feel great. Let's talk about the positives. This truck is an absolute brute. So as I talked about earlier, the Ford Excursion was literally based off of the Ford F-250 Super Duty chassis with a back put onto it. That's literally what Ford did. From where I'm sitting looking forward, I can't tell if I'm in an Excursion or F-250. Besides the little badge on the dash, which maybe that's why they put it on to remind drivers, I can't tell. And I think that's something that's truly missing from the market today. We had vehicles like this and the Suburban 2500 that I'll link at the end that I reviewed a little while ago and these were based off of the heavy duty trucks they could tow well over 10,000 pounds and carry three rows of people and still have cargo space this truck is a one and done do it all vehicle if you have to tow a boat up to the lake house and bring your eight kids with you you can absolutely do that in this vehicle yes there are more luxurious suvs yes there are quieter suvs yes there's more plush and sportier suvs this isn't fast by any means but sometimes you don't need fancy you need something to work all day every day you know what this truck is it's that little wedge doorstop that you see in banks and supermarkets and other buildings it's this little gray triangle often made of rubber or some other material and you shove that thing under the door and it holds the door open no that is not fancy it's been the same for years and years and years it's been the same formula but you know what it works every single time if you leave it out in the rain it's fine if you leave it out in a storm if you leave it out on a hot sunny day it's going to be fine that little triangle doorstop does the job perfectly and we don't need anything else it does it that's how i feel about this excursion it's a brick it's a hammer we don't need more technology it does whatever job you throw at it reliably and comfortably when this truck is going and towing, it doesn't feel like it's encumbered in any way. It's not like, oh, I have to tow a trailer. It's like, okay, toss the trailer on, okay? It doesn't care, and that's what I love about this truck. It's hard to put it into words, but I really truly love it, and it's sad that we don't really get SUVs like this anymore because the Excursion, when it was originally sold from 1999 to 2005, it actually didn't sell well. 2000 was, I believe, its best-selling year and declined after that. In 2005, they really didn't sell that many, and so Ford cut it. But now, away from that era, these are still in high demand. When someone says, hey, I need something for my family that can also tow, I say, Ford Excursion. And I really do prefer this over the 2500 Suburban that I drove because that was a, just a big gas V8. This is the diesel. The diesel really makes the difference in terms of power, in terms of reliability. I just, I would prefer the diesel over the 8100 of that Suburban that I drove. Would I show up to a red carpet event in one of these? Probably not. 
It's not my vehicle of choice. But there's a reason why our Secret Service used these for a very long time. There's a reason why big families that have boats and trailers and dirt bikes, they swear by these. And that's why these are in high demand. Yes, this vehicle has 182,000 miles on it, but that's really still just getting broken in in terms of the excursion. People will buy these with 200, 300,000 miles and run them for another 100,000. And that is really, truly amazing. I love the excursion. I think this is one of the best SUV slash truck things to ever hit the market. And I'm so thankful to be able to share it with you today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Max at Cadillac of Naperville. It's been absolutely awesome. When I saw this pop up on their website, I knew I had to drive it. They offer awesome deals. It's a no BS payment system. So what you see on the website is what you're going to pay at the dealer. And I absolutely love that about them. We've been working together for quite some time. I'm excited to share more vehicles from them with you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.